Good morning. Welcome this beautiful Tuesday morning to prayers that light our path. I'm again this morning from Faustana, where I come sometimes to enjoy the quiet and the solitude as I look behind me over that pastor and all the beauty that God has given to us. And in this beautiful church that has withstood time, and I'm so grateful God gives me this opportunity to come to you every morning just with a few words. Yesterday we talked a little bit about anger. And today I would like to take that just one more step. You know, I'm amazed really at how well our community, our state has gone through some of the things that we've gone through, the changes in our life, the, the changes we've had to make that have really been uncomfortable. And they've gone on now for a long time. Unfortunately, we know that these changes are going to be with us for a little while longer, maybe a long time longer. I encourage you not to, to get distressed because our protection of ourselves, our protection of others, is what's important if we're going to get a grip on this evil that has attacked us in the form of a little tiny virus. But I, I want to read another verse this morning because I feel anger sometimes. I feel, I feel just mad that I can't do what I want to do, that I can't go and see who I want to see. And God understands that. God understands that. God understands and knows all about anger. God felt anger himself, I'm sure, at times. But its I don't think it's the anger itself that's sinful. I think it's what we do as a result of that anger that then becomes sin. Let me read a verse to you. It comes from Ephesians 4.26. It says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Join me in prayer. Father, you know all about anger because you have felt it yourself. What you condemn, though, is not anger itself, but the sins that anger gives rise to. It's what I do when I'm angry that counts. Does my fury make me say words that, that hurt that hurt other people and make me, make me be remembered for years as that person who responded with sinful ways? Is my tone of voice a weapon instead of a healing ointment to these people who are suffering? Do I belittle those that I love in the heat of anger sometimes? Or do I remain as rational as possible, perhaps retreating until I can discuss this problem with whomever in a loving manner? Father, the next time I'm angry, I pray, I pray that you'll guide me away from the sin until I can speak words of peace, until I can speak words of reconciliation and once of comfort once again. Help me. Help me to be example to my family and to my friends and to everyone that I come in contact with in my community. Father, continue to give us the strength. We love you and in your name we pray this morning. Amen. Remember those words. Remember the words as we go through our life. And... I know that sometimes I get a little testy, maybe even with Miss Irma. And I know sometimes probably I, I hurt her feelings. I don't mean to. I get distraught and I get short. But I ask God, please God, forgive me. Help me, help me to be able to, to take those words and to turn those words into words of comfort and healing and understanding. 
That's what God wants us to do. Always remember God loves you. I love you. And the people of the United Methodist Church love you. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.